Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome back to uh, another new video. Uh, today I want to take a look at Awesome Window Manager, uh, jacking with the config and trying to get it uh, a little more like something that I uh, want to be using. Quick note, uh, I'm sure there's a bit of like echoing in this video, certainly much more than normal. I know it's an issue, uh, I'm not sure how much of it I'll be able to remove after the fact, but you know, uh, bear with me for a second, I'll definitely will be fixing that as soon as I can, but for now, we'll just deal with it. So, uh, awesome window manager. Uh, probably the first thing that we will want to do is uh, change the wallpaper. I mean, there's a lot of things we want to do here, but um, I'm just going to pick something at random, uh, so we'll start with fixing a wallpaper. So. Normally, the ideal way that Awesome would work is if you right click, you have a little menu here. Uh, also, if you click up here in the top corner, you have a menu here and you can launch a couple apps and things. And uh, that doesn't really work out of the default uh, unless you have, I believe it's Xterm installed. Uh, I do not. I have three terminals on the system. I've got uh, Kitty, I've got Alacrity, and I've got uh, Termite. So what I need to do is launch one of those. And so there's two keyboard shortcuts, I'll tell you, and just kind of remember them. If you don't remember them, use this menu up here and just launch hotkeys. That's one of the two keyboard shortcuts, uh, Super S or Command S or Windows Key S, whatever, uh, will launch a menu where you can see all of the available keyboard shortcuts that you have. And when you launch that, you'll see another one here, Super R, that will allow you to run applications. So what we'll do here is we'll type in Super R and we will launch a terminal. And the first thing we're gonna wanna do here is, well, first thing we're gonna wanna do here is make the text a bit bigger here. And then we're gonna run pac or sudo pacman dash s and install a program called nitrogen. Now this is a wallpaper setter, pretty basic. Uh, we'll go over to a new screen here and we will do command R again and type in nitrogen to run that. And you can see here, normally this takes a little bit of setup. All you need to do is go over to preferences and you're gonna type in uh, like hit add and then just pick a directory. Now in my case, I've got a Git repository where I store a lot of wallpapers and I just pulled that down and linked that up. So uh, now we can pick a wallpaper. Uh, I'm gonna change the mood to zoomed fill. I find that works pretty well. And then let's pick a wallpaper that'll look nice. There's one I just downloaded. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, I thought this one would look good for the video. Yeah, there it is. That's a good wallpaper. I like that one a lot. Okay, cool. We can go ahead and close that app, come back over here to our terminal, and what we can do is we can now actually find a way to edit that config file. So what you wanna do is in your home directory, type CD to make your, sure you're in your home directory. You're gonna make a directory, uh, call it dot config. Chances are you already have that directory if you don't make it. And then you're gonna change the directory into that config folder. And inside of this, what you wanna do is create a directory called awesome. So you'll do make dear, call it awesome, and then you can you know CD into that directory if you want to. There's nothing inside. Well, there shouldn't be anything inside. Ignore this for a second. We'll get back to that in a second. But uh, what we need to do is copy over a sample config that we can mess with, and luckily we've got one on our system. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do CP, that's the copy command, and we're gonna copy from Etsy, XDG, awesome, and then there's a file in here called RC Lua. And what we wanna do is just copy that into our home directory. Uh, so that's tilde slash, uh, tilde's uh, right above tab on most keyboard. Type in config, awesome, drop it straight into that folder we just created. Now if we list the files in this folder, we have one called RC Lua. Now, use any text editor you like. I don't have any sort of GUI text editors. I could install one real quick, probably. We'll do gedit. This one should install pretty quickly. And I'm doing this just to point out or to point out that if you wanted to open this in a GUI editor, it'd be pretty easy. You would type in the name of the editor and then you would type in the location. Whoa, you can make sure you spell the name of the editor right. And then be config, awesome, RC Lua. Okay, oh, there it is. Cool, okay, that did work. And then we can edit the config and like add them or gedit or VS code or whatever you might want to use, of course. I'm not really into that. So close without saving any changes, come back to our terminal. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use Vim. So I will edit config, awesome RC loop. Couple of things we're gonna wanna do pretty much immediately. Let's go all the way down to the bottom of the file. And I feel like I made this font just way too big here. So maybe we can scale that down one or two notches. If that's not big enough, I'm sorry. Let's create a new line here. The first thing that we might wanna do is like add gaps to the window so that we can sort of see the uh, the wallpaper underneath it. So what we could do is we could run, uh, I'll create a comment, we'll do two dashes, and I'll just say gaps. And then what we can do is we would type in beautiful dot useless 
whoops, useless underscore gap equals and give it a number. I'm not sure if this value is in pixels or points or what, um, but five tends to work pretty well for me. Save those changes. And then if we hit command S again to bring up our shortcuts, we have a shortcut here, very handy one. Whoops, control super R that will reload the awesome window manager. Control super R, it's gonna trip a bit, but then at some point, if we run a window, will have gaps in it. Very nice. Okay, so there we go. Okay, now we've got gaps working. Okay, so next thing we might wanna do is, let me reset our wallpaper here real quick. All right, and then the next thing you could do is um, we'll have some apps auto start. So a couple of examples that come to mind pretty immediately. Um, the first of which would be uh, like nitrogen, that wallpaper setter. We'll probably want that to relaunch every time so that we don't have to constantly reset our wallpaper. Um, you know, maybe something like Dropbox, would be handy to have launched all the time. And then we'll do something called PyCom, or in some distributions it might be called uh, Compton. And what this is, is a renderer or like compositor. I don't really know exactly what you would call it. It's, it's a program that's gonna enable transparency in our terminal, which if I were to open up something like my termite config, should have transparency enabled if we go to the background color you can see here I have a transparency value set for this terminal that I'm using and that's the same in kitty or alacrity or really any terminal that I would use uh, it looks a bit nicer in the videos and you know I like it to look nice in general so uh, anyways that's not working right now so we need to turn it on so first thing we'll do is let's launch a new terminal and then we can do pack or pack pseudo pacman dash s and install uh, pycom again on arch it's called pycom i believe on ubuntu it's called compton and probably a few other things but we're going to install pycom let that do its thing and then we'll have this auto launch when we start the awesome window manager so the way that we do that is with the command here it's going to be called awful dot spawn dot with underscore shell end it with some parenthesis and add some quotes in there and then we'll just make a couple of copies of that line and then we'll come in here and the first thing we'll add is we'll add pycom and then we'll add uh, Dropbox because I wanted that to launch as well and then we'll launch um, Nitrogen now when we just launch nitrogen this is gonna create a problem and I'll just like general I'll just reload alacrity or awesome to show you what that problem is um, so again it's control super R to reload awesome and you can see that what it does is it just launches the nitrogen app over here on my first window which isn't really what I want it to do what I actually wanted to do is I wanted to do a couple of different things it could restore the last wallpaper paper that I set or what I want it to do is I want it to pick a random wallpaper for me so let me grab a wallpaper here we'll just do a random one there okay and hop back over here our terminals and you will see I do have transparency now very nice and the easiest way to probably do this would be to run something like nitrogen dash dash restore and this is probably what most people will run and the way that this works if we open up a new terminal and we take a look at the man page for nitrogen you can see oh well, maybe there we go that's probably a little more readable um if we run it with the option restore it's literally just going to restore the last picture that we set up but a couple other things we can do with this that i think are pretty interesting uh one is that's very interesting is we can one set the mode for the wallpaper so like set whether we want it to be zoomed or tiled or scaled or whatever else and then something else we can do there's a flag here dash dash random which is very very nice so let's do that exactly so what we'll do is rather than just typing in restore, we'll change this to random. And I'm just gonna do you a favor and save you some time here. It took me a little while to figure out what the issue here was. After you do the random flag, you need to give a location for it to pull pictures from. It doesn't just remember whatever locations you've put into the Nitrogen app. I do not know why. Um, so what we'll do is we'll go into this the folder where I have my wallpaper stored and I'll just give it that directory and then whenever we reload awesome it should pick a random wallpaper and set it for us which is phenomenal great um, one other thing you might do is if I go into my um, zish config or you know bash config whatever shell you might be using I set up a, a, an uh, alias here that runs this exact same command just every time I type W 
So if I just type W in a terminal, I can set myself a new wallpaper really easily. Oh, one more thing we probably should do down here is I'm going to come to the beginning of this nitrogen line and I'm gonna say dash dash, whoops, dash dash set zoom fill. And that will make sure it's sort of rendering the wallpaper the way that we want it to. That should be good. Um, okay, so next thing we wanna do, there's a thing in Alacrity here called sloppy focus. And let me give you a little demo here. If we open up another window. Um, as I move the mouse, the focus of the window manager will follow the mouse. And that's probably sort of handy. I freaking hate it. I don't know, I, I bump the mouse way too often and it moves my focus. I'd rather just have to manually trigger it. Or one thing you can do if we go ahead and turn sloppy focus off is you can still trigger it with the mouse by just clicking on the window. It's just not gonna follow your mouse automatically. So um, you'll notice I bring that up because it's right here towards the bottom of the config. You have a comment called enable sloppy focus. And this is the code right here that enables that functionality. Um, you could just search through the config for sloppy focus. And then once you find it, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to comment the whole thing out. And then if I reload awesome again, we can no longer, then the focus will no longer follow our mouse. We're going to have to actually click to do it or use some keyboard shortcuts. Uh, Command or super J and K are shortcuts for that that will allow you to quickly sort of change uh, focus, po focus points. Um, next up, uh, you'll notice probably a little bit of an issue whenever I reloaded Alacrity there. Let me do it again to demonstrate here. Um, we'll reload Alacrity. And if we come over here, our windows are on top of each other. And that's because Awesome Window Manager is always starting in this floating mode. It has several modes that we can use, um, but it's always starting in the floating mode for some reason. So I'm having to come up here and click to the next mode in order to get these to sort of stack each other properly. I have no idea why that's the default behavior. That doesn't seem like the kind of thing that anyone who uses a tiling window manager would want, but we can fix it pretty easily by going down in the config a bit. Uh, what we're looking for is a section here called, I don't even know what it would be called. Oh, here we go, awful layout. So you could just search awful.layout. And you'll notice here, this just lists every type of layout that we could do. So what I'll do is I'll come in here to this floating layout and I will immediately just comment it out. And what I'll actually do is I'm gonna comment out every layout other than the one that I wanna use uh, so that I don't ever accidentally trigger a layout that I don't want. So uh, I'm just gonna pick this tile uh, layout here and then what I can do is I'll come down to all of the other layout types here and comment them out so that they can't ever be accidentally used. So then we can reload again and if we come over here to our second window everything's still gonna look good. It will reset like any custom sizing that you do but you know that's just kind of how it works. Um, now while we're up here right above the awful layout status we can fix a little bit of an issue that we're having. Uh, by default uh, there is a shortcut to launch a terminal. You can right click or go up to this menu and do open terminal. But if you look at the sh shortcuts, there's also a command or a, a shortcut here, super enter to open a terminal. That's very handy, but it's looking for X term and we don't have that. So let's go ahead and just change that to termite. And while we're here, we'll change our editor to whatever we like to use, you know, do Atom or VS code or whatever. Uh, but I'm gonna do uh, invim, my editor, save the changes, reload. And then if we do command or super enter, we will be launching a new terminal. Very nice. And the next thing I wanna do is I wanna get rid of uh, title bars in the uh, setup here. So if I search for probably title bars, here it is, um, add title bars to normal clients and dialogues. There's a couple of different places where title bar is gonna come up in the config here. And what I wanna do is just sort of delete them all. Or you could comment them all out if you think you might wanna turn this back on at some point, but I'm like dead positive. I'm never gonna want title parts. I just think they're kind of ugly. That's one of the main draws of a uh, tiling window manager for me, actually. Title, yeah, we don't need that. That's something else. Okay, save the changes, control command R, and now we have no title bars. And that's gonna be true of any apps that we launch. We can launch as many terminals as we want, and they'll be the super kind of slick, sexy, no title bar look. Uh, we could even launch something like a browser, uh, Firefox, for example. So let's open up Firefox 
and hey, no title bars. Uh, what's the command to close by default? I don't remember. Oh, shift super C, shift super C. There it is, cool. Uh, I did not know that. And the reason I didn't know that is because I've jacked with a lot of the keyboard shortcuts. Not a lot of them, but a fair few. So let's go ahead and do that. I wanna come down uh, and I'm gonna search for the run prompt. Oh, here we go. Here's the bit right here. Uh, so, so you can see here, uh, we have a setting here called prompt and it's saying when we hit command R, it's gonna do the run prompt. Um, I kind of hate the default run prompt here. It's really bad because you have to type in the exact you know name of an app to launch it. Uh, you know, if I wanna launch nitrogen, I have to type nitrogen all the way out, completely finish typing before I can do anything else with it. That's really bad in my opinion. And there's a lot of good alternatives, uh, probably one of the more popular ones. And the one that I've been using so far is one called dmenu. Uh, you can do pack dash s dmenu to install it. And then you can run it by just typing in dmenu underscore run. And you'll see it pops up right here. And now if I want to type in nitrogen, I hit the first couple of letters. It knows what I'm doing. I hit enter, app is launched. So let's make that happen over here. Uh, first thing we want to do is let's jack with the function a bit here. You can see the function is basically this bit right here and it's running my prompt slash run whole bunch of stuff um what we want to do is just sort of delete all of this until we get down to this end section here you know maybe we'll just move the end thing down to a new line and what we can do is in front of that we can type awful util dot spawn and this is how we'll launch an app and then what we'll do is inside of this we'll just do some parentheses and some quotes and we'll do d menu run okay the way that these sort of things work is you have two lines usually in for a keyboard shortcut. You have a description and then you have a line that has the actual command that you're gonna run and a shortcut. I've moved it down to three lines because I think it's a bit simpler that way. So this third line here is the description and that is how this will look if we do that uh, super S menu. So if I were to change the description here to launch D menu, and then I change the group to my name. It will create a custom group called MAKC, and then what it will do is uh, show me the description that I've typed in here. Uh, and then what I can do is up here, the shortcut is mod key, just the standard mod key, that's mod for the super key. And then R is going to run the function, or well, not the function, but whatever is before this end thing, uh, which in this case is awful.util.spawn, D menu run, it's just gonna run D menu for us. This should be much better, uh, but I wanna change that R to space. So that whenever I do, super space it runs and then we'll just change that to d menu save all the changes control command r and then if we do super space and we try to launch firefox there we go um now speaking of launching firefox we could probably do that a bit quicker so let's make a copy of this put it down there change this to firefox and then we're going to change the command here to firefox and we're going to change the shortcut to b Try and reload that again. Come over here, we'll do super B. That'll launch Firefox for us. Very nice. There are not really too many other shortcuts that I jacked with or anything. I remember there was one that I was doing if I search for like um, close, there's a, yeah, shift C or what is it? It's super shift C, mod key shift C to close a window. I don't like that. I'm gonna change that to Q and I'm gonna get rid of the shift there so that I can just close windows with super Q. That's how it works on Mac OS by default. And then if I come over here, we'll set another wallpaper. And if I do command Q or super Q, yeah, that closes windows now. That's pretty handy. There's a couple of other things probably, but for the most part, I'm happy with this setup. Uh, there's just one more thing I wanna talk about and that's uh, floating windows. Um, so by default, let me launch a I need to stop trying to launch a browser. Let me find something else to launch here. Maybe we can launch an instance of maybe uh, just a different, you know what, we can just launch a couple extra terminals. Okay, so a couple extra terminals here. Um, there is a shortcut here that's super handy. It is shift command space or shift super space. And what that will do is trigger floating mode for Windows. And that's really not, you can just sort of float a window whenever you want to. But the issue is we don't have a good way to move this around. 
since we don't have the title bars anymore. This is like the one spot where title bars are actually helping us. So we want to fix for that. And there were a lot of different fixes that we could use. But the one that I found, if I open up a browser here, let me open up maybe a cute browser. I found a plugin for Awesome Window Manager, I guess is what it would be. This was super wild. Yeah, here it is. Here's the guy that made it, L13 or whatever it is. Uh, and this is a freaking app or like an additional plugin that works with awesome window manager and allows you to move around these floating windows. It was like the simplest solution I could find and it's also super easy to do. So all you need to do is clone this Git repository into your awesome window manager config. So let me get out of this. Uh, so if we go into config, awesome, all you would have to do is type in git clone and then this web address here. I'll leave a link in the description, uh, but you can see I've already done that. And then what you want to do is you want to go into your rc.lua file and you want to add right up here at the top where we're getting packages to use. Um, I put it right down here below this autofocus thing. We're just going to type in require underscore or parenthesis and then inside of some quotes we're just going to type in collusion or collision it's oh pff, not collusion collision and then we'll close that up with some extra parentheses and by the way that was just right there on the github repo where you were supposed to type that i just sort of remembered it so then if we reload if we launch another terminal for example i'll do control super space to get it into floating mode i've got a couple of very handy controls now uh, one is if we do shift super and then the arrow keys we can move around this floating window to wherever we want it uh, if we do i think it's command alt in the arrow keys we can sort of expand the window a bit and if we add a shift into that we can shrink it down some okay and again shift command will just sort of mess with it um there's a lot of other keyboard shortcuts i think there's some that you can snap it to corners with yeah there it is um look around on the github page again i'll leave a link in the description and that will be good oh we get some kind of error here huh i don't know what that was let me reload awesome again and see if we get the same problem control command r no we don't have the issue i don't know what that was maybe it was just something weird i did with that plugin Okay, there we go. Uh, I think that's it for this video, everybody. So thank you everyone for checking it out. I hope you, if you're also using Awesome Window Manager, this helped you out a bit. Uh, I didn't find this particularly difficult to get set up, which is great. Um, I'm, there's plenty of other window managers that are quite, quite a bit more difficult to get set up. There were some that I logged into and there was just like a black screen. And I know you have to sort of know how to launch a terminal and stuff with it. And you know, there's some stuff, there's ways to do it. It's no big deal. But uh, this was super user friendly, uh, but it's nice to be able to config it a bit and make it a bit easier to use. And uh, so that's that. Thank you everyone for checking out this video. Uh, hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one, hopefully with a bit less echoes.